Hello everybody, Garrett Bischoff here from Sonoran Desert Institute. Uh, I got Eric with me from Iraq Vet 8888. We are here at an undisclosed location. Um, Eric, first of all, thanks a lot for having us out and taking the time on your Saturday to hang out with us. Really appreciate that. Anytime, uh, man. I know, it's, I know it is deer hunting season. It, it is deer hunting season. We've uh, we've been out in the woods this morning. We got out and, uh, you know, it's the first day we've had snow this year. So we're out in the, in the snow. And well, I can't really call it snow because it, it doesn't really stick to the ground. But it's some facsimile that resembles snow. I'll tell you what, it's snow to me. Coming from Florida where it was 80 degrees yesterday. Um, and now we're here and it's 30 and it's cold for a Florida boy. But mm -hmm. hey, that's what it's cold season. for a Georgia boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what hunting season is all about, right? That's right. So, well, as I mentioned, uh, so we've been here all afternoon, and Eric's been kind enough to kind of walk us through a day in a life and what he and what he does and what 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 kind of his operation is all about. So, why don't you go on and give the folks home a little recap of what we've been doing today? Well, basically, um, you know, I got out of the uh, deer woods this morning. We we're out doing a little bit of hunting. Uh, Garrett showed up. We decided that uh, well, I already had some gunsmithing things lined up anyway uh, that I just had to do. Like I had to drop a different scope on one of my drillings uh, because there was an eye relief issue. Uh, so we were able to get that taken care of. So, you know, everything from like mounting optics uh, to cleaning guns. I mean, I had a couple of ARs that needed to be cleaned. You know, we just got out of the woods. So my buddy's AR was covered in snow and water and moisture. So we need to clean his AR up and get it, you know, ready to go. Because that's actually like literally his duty weapon too. So it's one of those things where, you know, he's out, you know, double duty in terms of, you know, hunting rifle and life and liberty type gun as well. Um, so just kind of keeping the guns clean. You know, we had a CMMG 9mm AR. Uh, we broke out the ultrasonic, got it cleaned up, uh, showed some of the things that you can do there in terms of hacks. Um, generally, when it comes to things that go uh, along, you know, here at the at the camp, so to speak, uh, we've always got something going on that relate, related to either gun cleaning or mounting optics or troubleshooting. You know, sometimes we go out and we make a video. Things may not be going according to plan. We have to come, you know, bring the gun back, assess the situation, figure out what's going on, and see if we can, you know, figure out some type of a fix. So that's a common thing, you know, not only me as a video guy that does uh, all different kind of video things on YouTube, but also as a hobbyist and as somebody that would do uh, something on their own accord, even an amateur level gunsmith or home level gunsmith, or many of you that are, you know, likely involved with SDI, you may uh, be aspiring to be a career gunsmith one day. You're going to run into those common problems when it comes to uh, things that, you know, the more um, tools that you're armed with, and the more knowledgeable you are and the more knowledge you gather, the better equipped you are to troubleshoot uh, some of those issues as they come up. I mean, guns are mechanical devices, and they do break, just like any other thing. Just like a mechanic, you know, you're a gun mechanic when you're a gunsmith. When you're going under the hood, so to speak, you're, you're trying to figure out what's going on and assess the problem. So it's always a constant struggle with that. You know, we do maintain a rather large collection in terms of having, you know, guns available to us for filming purposes. And a lot of those firearms need to be maintained. They need to be cleaned. Oftentimes they're shot with corrosive ammunition. They're shot with black powder. All those things have to require a certain specific cleaning regimen in order to keep the guns uh, in good serviceable condition. So sure. it's part of it. Now you mentioned uh, some of the SDI students. What is, and I know there's a wide variety of issues that could come in on a daily basis, but mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of the little common ones that some of these students could might expect to see you know in your in your day-to-day -day shop day-to-day -day shop as a gunsmith mm -hmm. you mean yeah well i would say that if i could if i could give any advice to a would-be gunsmith uh i will say i am an amateur gunsmith i I've, i have worked uh professionally as a gunsmith before I've, i worked under ray vaughn up at moss pawn and gun uh for quite a while i did most of the refinishing work uh parkerizing cerakote duracote uh, they now I've moved on and they now have another person that does that but also Sega conversions uh, custom Mosin work a lot of our early videos revolved around you know some of the kind of devil may care crazy uh, sort of rigs that we put together and everything and just from my experience uh, working in the gunsmithing field and also just being a guy that does a lot of stuff on my own as well I would say that a lot of the things that you're going to run into it's either going to be operator headspace where it's a really, really clear problem that's gone wrong and they just don't understand what's going on and it's a simple fix like, oh, 
uh, this guy put together his AR without the buffer spring in there, and now he can't figure out why the bolt won't go forward. Like, it's something silly like that. Or, you know, oh, well, some guy put in a spring backwards, and now the gun won't work right, and it's just some kind of simple thing. The wrong spring in the wrong location, or this part is upside down. You know, it's going to usually be a really simple little problem. Like, for instance, you know, one, one time they had a guy bring a Mini-14 in there. The hammer wasn't resetting. Well, the little leg on the spring had just come off. And that's why the hammer wasn't resetting. So just the simplest little thing. It just wasn't providing enough return action for the hammer to reset. So little bitty hacks like that are going to be probably 90% of your average culprits. Usually operator headspace. Usually a maintenance issue. A lot of people are going to bring you dirty guns and wonder why they don't work. Right. So cleanings. You're going to do a lot of cleanings. And uh, certain guns. I would say also it really comes down to knowing what to charge for what type of work. That's mm -hmm. a big part of it too. You know, if a customer brings you a Browning A5 and wants it cleaned down to the smallest piece, don't charge 35 bucks. Guys, that's a, a very, very detailed cleaning. And if you've ever had an A5 apart, you know that they're a mouse trap. So knowing which guns are mouse traps and which guns are just a simple walk in the park, like someone wants their Glock cleaned, you know, that's easy. So routine cleanings you're going to do a lot of. Operator headspace, simple little crap, you're going to deal with a lot of that. You're going to deal with a lot of guns where the bolts are stuck forward. You know, some guy got a round stuck in the chamber and brings you in a hot gun with a round in the chamber, so you're going to have to clear some live rounds out of guns that get stuck, Fantastic. whether it's an improperly uh, hand-loaded round or whether it's a bad factory round that had a weird spot on it and they went to trying to jam the thing in the battery and now it's stuck. You're going to have bore obstructions, things like that. And then you're also going to deal with some of your, your more next level things too. You know, you're going to have your customers that bring in a 1911 and want dovetails cut uh, for combat sites. You know, you're going to have people that want stippling and reprofiling of back straps, main string, uh, mainspring houses, housing, house, housings. I can't speak today. <laughs> Hoosings, like German. <laughs> but you're going to have people that want uh, checkering done. Sure. You're going to have people that have a stock repair that needs to be done. You know, a lot of the things you're going to run into, you will uh, become very familiar with using Acroglass and uh, Acrogel and steel bed and bedding, uh, you know, stock repairs. So knowing your limitations on stock repairs, you're going to see a little bit of everything. But to keep it short, I would say the average, average person is likely going to run into a lot of cleanings, a lot of operator headspace type stuff, mm -hmm. and a lot of things where you're going to go, you're going to look at your buddy. If, if you have a coworker, you're going to be like, okay, log this in. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a day or two, wink, wink. Right. And then when he leaves, you're going to go upstairs and go, wham! And then that's it's going to clear the problem. But you're going to deal with a lot of people that aren't comfortable working on their own guns. And that's okay. The biggest part is to not like belittle anybody. If somebody comes in the door and, and they took a magazine apart and don't know how to get it back together, help them out. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are coming to you because they need you. So that's another important thing to remember. Not everybody is mechanically inclined. Some people can barely clear a malfunction on a gun or load and operate a firearm properly anyway. Then you start talking some issues happening that just kind of um, makes the situation worse. So understanding when someone may just not be mechanically inclined and try to take care of them and point them in the right direction. So that's, that's part of the um, no. So what to, how'd you get to where you are now? Let's kind of go like, oh, let's rewind a little bit. We know okay. you served in the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Well, um, you know, kind of going, it depends on how far back you want to go. I'll give you the really, really short version because I know uh, a lot of folks probably have lives and, and things to do, and I don't want to uh, bore them with all my old boring stories or anything. But ba basically, the way that the channel kind of got started, Chad and I were in high school together. We were band nerds. We used to get together and play in the band room and hang out and do our thing. And, you know, he played bass, I played guitar. So we were mu we still are musicians, but Man, we met. Talents. Yeah, we, we met as musicians <laughs> in high school and then, you know, uh, discovered that we had a mutual interest in firearms. So we got together and did some shooting. And then, like, while we were still in school and while he was still in, in, in college and stuff, we didn't really film a lot uh, for the channel. That was kind of early on. But then eventually we got to a point where we're like, hey, let's start showcasing some of the stuff we're doing, mm -hmm. right? You know, and, and at the time, I had I joined a guard unit. You know, I was I was doing my thing, doing the weekend warrior thing. So I had a little bit of time to, you know, kind of do my thing. And after high school, we started just filming a few things, putting a few things on the YouTube channel, kind of showcasing what we just already happened to be doing, which really isn't grossly different than what we do now. 
we, we still might just have a vested interest in something that we may be doing and then go, hey, well, let's, let's go make a video. We're already going to be out shooting this gun. Let's just video while we're doing it. So you'll notice a lot of our range videos have that kind of air about them. Like we're just kind of doing our thing. Yeah, the camera works a little bit better. And, you know, yeah, it you know maybe looks a little nicer. Maybe the production quality is a little nicer. But overall, we're still just a couple of guys at the range just doing our thing. So that's how it started. And that I'd like to think we still kind of, you know, reflect upon that a good bit. Uh, I was deployed in 05. Uh, over to Iraq. So when I got back, it was kind of one of those things. When I went to make a YouTube channel, I never thought, okay, well, this would be something one day where it's going to be some brand or it's going to be some following or right. it's going to be some some cult following that I'm going to have behind this this IV8888 thing. Like at the time, it's like, okay, well, all right, I like Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, I used to be a racing fan. So all right, well, my screen name is going to be Iraq Veteran because at that point in my life, the most important thing that I felt like I had uh, accomplished was going over there and not dying, okay? So that was kind of a big deal to me. So I write veteran, and then, well, I like Dale Earnhardt Jr., 88. Well, you know, his number's 88. Well, it was taken. So it's like, well, dang, all right. Well, how about 8888? I know it's Dale Earnhardt, but who cares what anybody else knows? So since 88's taken, well, just give me four eights. So then I made my little screen name, and I started posting things on YouTube. And then slowly but surely, what you see before you kind of uh, happened. Uh, over time, you know, we built a following, built an audience, posted content, and I guess, as they say, the rest is kind of history. Mm. Although I'm not really one to, like, rest on my laurels. I mean, I like to just think that we always try to find new territory and, and, and kind of carve a new path in, in terms of what we're doing. And uh, I guess at this point in my life, the, the way that we've kind of come along with the whole project, I don't really feel... You know, looking back at military service and looking back at what I did, I didn't do the kind of things that, like, some of these guys went over, like, eight deployments, you know. Some of these guys did some really crazy stuff, you know what I mean? I, I was just, you know, kind of a low-level guy. I never really did anything majorly important, but that whole Iraq veteran thing just always kind of followed me and stuck. So I kind of just went with it or whatever and just kind of let it be a thing because that just is what it is at that point. But at this point in my life, I, I feel like the real accomplishments, and, and without tooting my own horn, I don't want to do that, and I'm not that kind of person. You'll never hear me ever talk about military service or anything in the past because it's the past. But I'd like to think at this point in my life, the, the real accomplishment is what we have built mm -hmm. uh, with the YouTube channel as its own entity. You know, a very large base of knowledge base, gunsmithing, how-to, reloading, uh, the five guns is kind of entertaining. We do the uh, the gun gripes, which is a little bit more political, so to speak. But, you know, we talk about things going on in the gun industry, which just like basically like old cackling hens sitting around complaining <laughs> about, about all that is. Yeah. And then, you know, we have uh, obviously all our range videos, our meltdowns. So now we've built this entire existence around my passion for guns. And I feel that spreading that out to the world around us is really more important than anything, anything that I possibly ever could have done in the past. And so hopefully that makes sense to some of you. Uh, this is my baby. This is what I do. Uh, I'm a video guy. Whether I like it or not, uh, I'm in, in for the long haul now. So well, you hopefully do it. that answers that question. <laughs> well, you do it and you do it well. I appreciate it. You do it. it well. So, And for those that may not be familiar with, with your stuff, where where can they find you? How do they search you out? So we're on YouTube. Uh, if you go to Iraq Veteran 8888 on YouTube, I know it's a weird uh, screen name, but hopefully I ex explain that a little bit. We're also on Facebook. It's uh, Iraq Veteran 8888 official, and and you can find us on Instagram at uh, Mrs. Iraq Veteran 8888. I believe is what it is. Yep. I don't handle any of the Instagram stuff. Chad and Brandy, uh, my wife Brandy and Chad is the cameraman. They do all the Instagram stuff. I, I, I handle the uh, Facebook stuff. And then, of course, we have the YouTube channel. So YouTube's kind of our, uh, our main uh, foray, so to speak. So that's where you'll find us. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, I know it's getting ready to get back in that deer stand time. So I'll let you get to it. Thank you again for taking time out of your sure Saturday thing, afternoon. Garrett. Make sure to tell your lovely wife, Brandy, that we said thank you for letting us borrow you for a little while. I'm not a problem. And uh, thanks again for, for doing a video and saying hi to everybody out there. So. Absolutely. And thank you guys for uh, supporting us. I know some of you that are watching this video are definitely viewers, I know, and uh, I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're watching this and you've been one of my students before at SDI, thank you very much. I appreciate you being patient with me. And thank you guys. Y'all have always been 
big supporters of the channel and we greatly appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Go get a deer. Oh yeah, we're going to do it. Thanks, brother. All right, Garrett.